Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. I'm Jimmy Buff. This time out, we're talking about ticks and talent. Later in the show, we're going to hear about the casting calls and opportunities for fame and fortune with Albany Talent. First, though, we're going to talk about a growing health concern for local residents. And here to talk about that is Stacy Kraft, the Public Health Education Coordinator for the Ulster County Department of Health. Hi, Stacy. Hey, Jim. That public health concern is Lyme disease, and it's not even warm out, yet here we are about to talk about ticks and Lyme. Why is that? It's a concern. When the temperature is above 40 degrees, the ticks are active and looking for their next blood meal. It's amazing, though, because with the, the winter that we haven't had this year, there are people, friends of mine, uh, well, my dogs haven't been out in the woods yet, but who are pulling off ticks through the winter. Is that a change in tick uh, behavior over the years? No, not in tick behavior. Um, they or do, in weather behavior, more likely. That's yeah. more likely because they do like to feed when it's above 40 degrees, so they're dormant in the temperatures below that. And um, we do have to be concerned that um, our, our dogs are bringing them into the house and so on the lookout all year long. and. Um, doing some things that can prevent the disease from causing a lot of trouble in our families and with our friends. How big a concern is Lyme disease? Well, in the Hudson Valley, it's a, a growing concern. The, um, uh, for, well, let me back up. What is Lyme disease? I mean, we, we, we've heard some of the symptoms. We'll talk about those too. But is it viral? Is it bacterial? What is Lyme disease? It's a bacterial infection caused by a spirochete. Um, the name of the spirochete is um, Borrelia burgdorferi. And it was first discovered in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Um, so this bacteria um, has the capability of basically causing a lot of um, pain and suffering. So we have to know how to prevent the disease. Well, well let's talk about those symptoms. How, if, if you think you have Lyme, what might you feel? Okay, early stage Lyme, um, people end up with flu-like symptoms. Um, so I'm talking about fever, chills, some maybe stomach aches, um, and there's some other things that you could find, like a bullseye rash. Um, this is, the technical term is erythema migrans. And, I'm um, glad you said that, not me. <laughs> it um, is an expanding rash. and. Basically, the trouble with the rash is that only um, 60 to 80 percent of the people get it. Um, so there's a large segment that don't see this rash. The evolutionary tactic of the tick, which is to hang out in tall grass and hope a warm-blooded mammal comes by, well, that's redundant, but hope a mammal comes by and brushes up against it so that it can then attach and work its way up seems like these things should have been extinct years ago. It doesn't seem like they should be, be proliferating, but they seem to be uh, growing in number in the area. Why is that? Well, ticks have the genetic makeup that they can um, seek out the carbon monoxide of their host. And so their host could be the white-footed mouse, it could be the chipmunk, the raccoon, um, or human, dog, cat. Um, so they're looking for that that gas, the, us breathing, and um, they're genetically wired to um, feed on a blood meal. And so they'll get their arms positioned, latch on. Ticks don't jump or fly, so they really do need um, the host to brush up against them. And then they crawl upward, and they're looking to feed um, in warm, moist places. And they do like to feed in the hairline and around the face. Now, now ticks themselves don't originate the Lyme disease, right? They pick it up from other animals. Is that uh, a That's correct, correct understanding? Yes. Um, the tick actually will pick it up from its host and mainly um, when it's uh, very young in its life cycle, which um, the first stage is the larval stage. Um, it will be, um, the tick will be hatched from its parent without um, the disease. And then it feeds on the white-footed mouse usually and will pick up the bacteria. Terrific. Well, I know the Ulster County Department of Health has made actually a 30-second um, PSA, a television commercial. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll come back and talk more about what we can do about preventing Lyme disease. So. You're watching Kingston Now. More in a moment. While you're enjoying the great outdoors in Ulster County, please be aware of ticks. Ticks can carry Lyme disease and other serious illnesses. Protect your family with these simple steps. Cover up and wear light-colored clothing to spot ticks easily. Stay on clear, well-traveled paths. Use insect repellent as directed. And 
Check everyone for ticks at the end of each day and remove them properly. Enjoy the great outdoors in Ulster County and be tick free. Welcome back to Kingston Now. We've been talking about ticks and Lyme disease with Stacy Kraft of the Ulster County Department of Health. And Stacy, um, I, I saw one of the images on your website which shows that Lyme disease seems to be prevalent in the Northeast and in the upper Midwest, but not so much out West or in the South or Southeast. Why is that? Well, it could have something to do with the um, oak trees. We have a lot of them in the Northeast and the white-footed field mouse um, is a big fan of that kind of food. So um, when we have enough acorns for the mouse, um, that population increases and um, then the ticks have a lot of hosts to feed on. So the solution to preventing Lyme is simple. We just cut down all the oak trees and get rid of the mice, right? Not necessarily. Let's talk about prevention. What, what, can, what can we do to prevent Lyme disease? Well, actually, let me, before we get to that, we were talking in the break about some of the symptoms of Lyme disease, and we mentioned a few a few minutes ago, but there are more, and Lyme can also be chronic, right? That's right. So um, the early stages we discussed, and then some people, um, the early stage is about three to 30 days after the tick bite. Um, some people then experience things like facial palsy and um, heart uh, trouble or joint pains and arthritis type symptoms. Um, and then there's other people who experience long-term complications um, that affect central nervous system and um, they uh, have something called um, post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. And this um, can sometimes require uh, long-term antibiotic therapy, although that is a bit controversial um, depending on the agency who is determining the course of treatment. But um, it's really a determination between the patient and the doctor, and they need to work closely together to find what works for their um, condition. So let's talk prevention. What, what can you do to prevent Lyme disease other than simply not get ticks? Right. Well, we wish that was an option. They're here to stay. And um, so the way that we can um, avoid getting Lyme disease is by doing some simple steps. And the most important is a daily tick check. So if we can incorporate that into our routine um, and maybe pair it with our shower or um, right before bed, um, do like a full body scan, that'll ensure that you can find these um, stealth uh, feeders and um, avoid your risk of getting sick. And, and they're amazing at, at um, you know, not, not wanting to be detected. Their mouth parts um, can uh, do a uh, an aesthetic so that not everybody feels when they're being bitten by a tick. And a proper tick check involves um, a scan with your hand. Um, and I always say a blind person can do an effective tick check because it's about feeling and um, knowing your body's geography so that you know your skin tabs, you know your um, moles, and when you find a bump that's not quite uh, normal, then you you know can get out the full length mirror and do a better check or involve somebody to help you. So, um, what about avoiding ticks getting ticks on your body when you go out into the out, in, into the outdoors? Yeah, there's an effective way of doing that. Um, there's a a chemical, actually, it's a pesticide called DEET, and if you use that in concentrations above 20 percent, um, that can help to ward off the ticks. Um, follow the label directions carefully, though, and if it's on your skin, you'll want to wash it off at the end of the night. You said to me that you were glad I was wearing a green shirt today because that is a tick prevention color, or? Yeah, it's one of the awareness colors. Awareness color. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well. Um, Every May we celebrate Lyme disease, um, well not celebrate, but we help to promote that we need to be aware that ticks are a threat in our area. So, um, you know, green is one of the symbolic colors for that. And um, that's about it. Also, I want to talk about the light colored clothing because um, if you wear the light colored clothing, you can spot the ticks more easily when you've come in from a hike uh, 
or an area where you know there's going to be ticks. What about household pets bringing ticks into the house? Can they go from oh, yes. a cat or a dog that's been outside to a person? That's for sure. They can um, be looking for their next blood meal in your home if they don't attach to your animal. Um, so one way that you can help to get it off of your animal is by brushing your animal before they come into the house. Um, and another, there's few things, you can talk to your vet about it, but um, best to do um, things like the Lyme vaccine for the dog and also the um, front lines or different pesticides to help um, keep the ticks um, at bay and that's a good option. Stacy, thanks for being here and helping us uh, raise awareness about tick and Lyme disease. People can find out more information about this on the Ulster County Department of Health website. That's true. And if they stop by the Ulster County Department of Health, we have a nice tool, a tick removal kit that um, they can pick up and effectively remove their ticks. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is Kingston Now. Next, it's time for your close-up with Albany Talent, actor and model management. Think you've got what it takes to be a star? Stay tuned and find out. You're watching Kingston now. Albany Talent has its home office in Albany, but last year they opened an office here in Kingston at 721 Media, which, by the way, is a home for Kingston now. And with us now to talk about what Albany Talent does is James Pentotti, the founder. Hi, James. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm all right. How's, how's things, man? How's business? Busy. Busy. Yeah? Yesterday we got slammed with, I think, five different casting calls. Well, let's back up. What, what, was, what are the origins of Albany Talent? What is your background? Well, I've been in the modeling and acting business for 34 years. As a model and an actor yourself? Yes, uh -huh. I was a full-time catalog model working in the Midwest in five states, about 12 different agencies. And uh, I moved up into this area because I also write musicals. Mm -hmm. And I found this beautiful old historic church that had been dilapidated. And I brought it back and it turned it into a musical theater and concert hall. So that's what brought me to the area. And after living here for five and a half years, I just saw a desperate need for having a good talent agency for models and actors to go to. And so Albany Talent came to fruition. Pe people think of like New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, the big places are where the talent is located. But is there good local talent here? Yeah, it's, it's a small market, yes. But it, it's the smallest market I've ever worked in. Yeah. But it's, it's the capital of the state of New York. A lot of state government work. And also there's a thriving uh, technology industry here. So the, the business is growing. Across the United States, it's been tough. Advertising has been down recently. But it's, we had a great year. We grew 57% last year. What, what kind of people are trying to, for lack of a better description, be stars? So who comes to Albany Talent? What are they looking for? We're a full service model and actor management company, so we don't specialize in any single area. Mm -hmm. When you go to New York City, that's when they start to specialize. And they only work in one small section of the market. Like there are agencies there that represent kids, they represent actors, they represent fashion models. We have to represent everybody because we have to handle any kind of job that comes through. So we've got infants, we got kids, we have a little 10 year old that's just getting ready to sign a record deal. Uh, I just got through discovering an Italian tenor. He's amazing, and I placed him with the management team that discovered Lady Gaga. Uh, we have a young lady who's going to be on America's Next Top Model. So we've got all, all ranges of, of people. Are people, are, are agencies who are looking for talent coming from, you know, from New York City, are they looking to come here because it's more affordable for them to work with local talent? I mean, why would someone from New York City come looking for talent here? Well, the advantages here, we, we do have lower rates. New York City can get pretty expensive. So production rates are lower here, you know, uh, talent rates are lower. So we have an advantage. So we could go down into the city and coax some people to do their spots right here in Kingston. How are you finding talent? Are, do you, are you advertising? I mean, we're doing this TV spot now and people are watching and they're thinking, oh, I'm going to contact them because I think I've got what it takes. But how else do you get the word out about Albany Talent? Well, mostly they find us. Mm -hmm. They find us on the web. On, and then also we get a lot of referrals from our own people. We just did a casting call yesterday up in, up in Albany for a series of PSA public service announcements. And I had probably 10 people call because they said they talked to one of my actors, one of my people, and they, they highly recommended us. We find that if we get referrals, it's a higher quality of interview than somebody who just comes in off the street. How many clients are you representing? Men, women, children? Right now, I'd say we probably have around two, 250. And in a market like Albany, Kingston, we should probably build to at least 500. So it's, and, and it's because of the 
vast quantity of jobs that we do that's a variety rather than one small type. And also because most people do this on a part-time basis here. They don't do it as a full-time job, which means there's a, a lot of times when they're just simply not available. Can you make a living doing this? Can you make a living being a, a, a model or uh, someone who appears in print ads or? In a market like Albany, it's almost impossible to do this full time. You've got a multi-market. In other words, if you get over to Boston, get down in New York City, uh, do that. Larger cities, it, it takes about a, a, a city the size of Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, um, Pittsburgh. That, then you can do it as a full-time job. But um, in a market like Albany, it's, it's, it's a part-time thing. You're a handsome guy. It's no wonder you were a model as a young man. Are you still doing it as, uh, as the owner of Albany Talent? Are you getting yourself out there and doing some work? Every once in a while they ask for me if they can't uh -huh. find exactly what they want. I've got a spot for the Department of Motor Vehicles for New York State that's running. Um, if you type in learning is for life, NYSDMV, you'll see me in action. That's you? Yep. Great. Let's talk more about this in just a moment, okay? Sounds great. This is Kingston Now. We'll continue exploring the world of acting and modeling with James Pentotti of Albany Talent. Welcome back to Kingston Now. So, you think you've got what it takes to be a star, or at least try and make a living at it in acting or modeling? Here with us again is James Pentotti of Albany Talent. So James, you uh, started yet the, obviously it's Albany Talent, so you're up in Albany, but you opened in Kingston about a year ago. Why'd you do that? Because I think this is a great market. It's a lot closer to New York City, and there's an incredible media center here. That's just you know, two ad agencies, a TV station, radio station, production studio with green screen, uh, some small theaters right here in one facility. So this is an amazing place for us to be able to draw business from the city. And uh, we found some excellent people down here too. Yeah, there's a lot of um, major talent who call the Hudson Valley home. Is that work its way into your work, uh, into Albany talent at all? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we found some amazing people. Uh, Laura Shoemaker is my director for the Kingston office. Laura was a Vogue cover model during the 1980s, modeled with Ford. She's modeled all over the world. She's here to interview people, and uh, you couldn't get any better advice than from Laura. You also do acting classes and seminars? Yes. In a market like you know Kingston, Albany, we have to be able to develop our own talent. We can take people that are brand new and make them good. We can take people that are good and, and make them better. You know, I've been in the business 38 years. I think Laura's been in around 28. So with 62 years of experience, we, you know, we can definitely add to somebody's expertise. If someone is watching and they think, you know, I'd really like to try that, what do you look for when they come in for the first time? We look for their ability to communicate, their intelligence, personality, you know, charisma, that, that X factor, you can say. And then, of course, obviously, we're looking at their talents, where we think their potential is. You know, we represent singers, dancers. By the way, we want to bring an original musical to Kingston called Middle School Madness. Oh. So we're going to be looking for you know, 10 to 15-year-olds that can sing, dance. And uh, we want to bring original works to this region. I think Kiss Me Kate's been done about 10,000 times. I think we can, <laughs> we can do some new works. And don't forget, The Music Man is another one that gets done a lot, too. Oh, absolutely. So how do people determine a legitimate company like yours from some of the less scrupulous people who are saying, come on, I'll, I'll do headshots for you, I'll make you famous, I'll make you a model. We hear about those places all the time. Wh how, how can they know that you're legitimate, obviously, but how do they determine other people aren't? There's some good things to look for. Number one, who are the people you currently represent? Good people go to good agencies, and they stay with good agencies. So when you look at the, the, the caliber of the people we have, I think you'd be impressed. Also, you're going to see a lot of variety. An agency like Albany Talent has got to have not just fashion models, you know, a bunch of you know, bathing suit beauties. We've got to have the kids. We've got to have the senior citizens. We've got to have the ethnic breakdowns. So that's one thing you want to look at is the quality of the people that we represent and the variety of people. Number two is look at the quality of the photography they use to represent themselves. Good agencies know that you live and die off the quality of your pictures. So we help our people make sure that they come in with good stuff. We work with excellent photographers. And most of the time when people come in with their own work, most of the time, it's, it's not, it doesn't really meet our standards. The third thing you look for is the quality of the jobs that we get. You know, it's the two toughest jobs to get in our business in smaller markets is number one, catalog work for print. And we just did a fashion shoot with Ursula of Switzerland, and they booked three of our models for that. Uh, also look for on-camera speaking roles. 
and we've been getting a lot of those. So when you get those two kinds of jobs, that's when you know you're dealing with somebody that's legitimate. Are, um, with the advent of the internet, um, are print catalogs still as prevalent as, as they used to be, and does the internet still use images as they do in those old print catalogs? Um, the amount of catalog work has gone down somewhat, but there's a lot of work that is going straight to the web. We just got through doing a series of uh, commercial spots for the web only for uh, My Lady Cosmetics, and we had on-camera male and female roles. So it's, we lose some, we gain some on both sides. How do you get the word out to the other side of the business? How do you get to the, the people who are looking for talent in the big cities to let them know that Albany Talent has good people right here? See, that's where it's important that the agency that you're working with knows how to book. Because that we've got to be able to go out and talk to clients. And we know the lingo, the terminology. You know, I know, you know, we know how to get inside a client's head and understand what they're looking for. That's called casting. When a client tells me what they want, and I show them five people that are perfect. So we, we actually go out and really try to find jobs. The, um, I, I was looking at the kids who are on your website who, uh, for potential work. Every single one of them is cute. How do you determine which one is, is the one who gets the job? That's not our job. Uh -huh. We're the middle person. Our job is to show these the best people we can find to the clients, and then they're the ones who make the choice. All right. After the show, remind me to show you a picture of my three-year-old, by the way. I think uh, he's got it. <laughs> well, I think you've got it too, Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks, James. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. That's it for this week's show. Thanks to Stacy Kraft of the Ulster County Department of Health and to James Pentotti of Albany Talent. Remember, all our shows are now archived on our YouTube channel, and you can find the link on our Facebook page. You can also suggest topics for future shows on Facebook, too. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buff. We'll see you next time.